In our last video, we hopped off our cruise ship and explored the beautiful city of Glasgow. We had so much fun going around the city into incredible cemeteries and eating amazing Scottish food. And here we are again, but we're in a different location. We had so much fun trying Scottish food in the last video that we decided in this video we're going to do nothing except eat Scottish <laughs> food. If you don't know who we are, my name is Trevor and this is Anna. We are the Delightful Travelers. Hit subscribe and click the like button because there's a lot of food coming up today. Well, you might notice we are not in Glasgow anymore. We actually hopped on a train, went about an hour to the southwest coast of Scotland. We are in a cute little seaside town called Ayr. Ayr. I like saying it. Ayr. Yeah. Ayr. <laughs> Ayr. I don't know about you guys, but when I think of Scotland, I definitely don't think of beaches. How did you end up finding this place? I have no idea. I just started looking for places that are kind of close to Glasgow. To be honest, we wanted at first to go to Inverness and go see the Highlands, but we are here in August and it's just way too expensive yep. at this time of year. We could in no way afford it. So, so expensive. <laughs> so I started trying to look for places a little bit closer to Glasgow and then seaside kind of came to mind. So we found this little town. So right now we are walking towards our first stop. It's our first food stop today and we cannot wait to eat. We're absolutely hungry and I think you guys are going to like it. We have come over to a restaurant called Vista and this is a traditional dish that you're going to find all across the UK. Not just here in Scotland but only one day a week because this is a traditional Sunday roast. They had a few different options on the menu but I went for the chicken. It's a roast chicken. Comes in a gravy and it also has a whole bunch of things with it. Uh, mashed potatoes, a bunch of roasted vegetables. Not quite sure what this guy is, but we'll find out. And then I believe that is Yorkshire pudding. All right, the question is, what are you gonna start with? <laughs> Maybe I'll try, try to get a little bit of everything. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, it smells so good, you guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe not quite everything, but I got a chicken there, mashed potatoes, some carrots. I doused it in the gravy, so let's give it a go. Yeah, this is going to be good. A perfect Sunday meal. I know for most of us, most people don't work on Sunday. It's a day of relaxation just to take it easy and enjoy yourself. So a nice hearty meal is perfect. Here in the UK, obviously the weather isn't the hottest. I don't know if I'd want to have this if it was like 30 degrees outside. It's about 17 or 18, so it's perfect weather for hearty food like this. Excited for all the gravy. I haven't tried the Yorkshire pudding yet. I don't know if I've ever actually had Yorkshire pudding before. I think I have, but it's been a long time. I literally have no idea how to even like what to do with this. It almost looks like you can pick it up, but I Maybe, mean, it's but gravy sitting on the bottom. <laughs> apologies if I'm doing this completely wrong. I gave up on the fork and knife. I, it, again, if you're not supposed to use your hands or if you are supposed to eat it a particular way and I'm doing it wrong, I don't know the difference. <laughs> but I'm gonna dip it, dip it in gravy for sure. It's just funny because in North America, we would often have dinners like this on a Sunday or on a special occasion, turkey, roast beef, you know, ham, all that stuff. But something that's never really made it over there is Yorkshire pudding. No idea why, because it goes really, really well with, with the gravy. It's just nice and simple, kind of fluffy, a little bit crunchy on the top, but probably the way it was cooked, but it just like sops up the gravy. So I went for the same thing, except I got the, uh, the roast beef. Now, I don't know if this is slightly more traditional or not. It very well could be, but I saw roast beef on the menu. It was calling my name. I had to do it. Right now, that's smothered in gravy. I just want to taste the roast beef on its own before I get into the rest. Well, this just melts in your mouth, to be honest. It's super tender. You can see the gravy just dripping off it. It's rich in flavor, and I would say it's like the perfect cut. One thing I like about these kind of Sunday roasts, I got some potatoes on this side. Everything eventually just gets kind of mashed together and makes for a perfect meal. I should also say we're eating this at about 1.30 on a Sunday. It might be the only meal we're having today. And we also, I should say, got a Tenant's Beers. This is a Scottish beer. It's not the first time we had this. I think we had it in the last video. Oh. It's also really, really good. I've just come across one of these golden little potatoes. Dare I call them magic potatoes. Look at these. You can see they're all golden and crispy on the outside. Perfect. On the inside, I just took a bite. I'm gonna take another bite and try to describe it. Mmm. Oh. Just with that gravy. The gravy is so rich here. It's very different. 
than the gravy we have in Canada. I'm sure we could make this kind of gravy, but I don't know, something about it. I like this kind of Scottish roast already. One, my favorite thing about this is just so many different kinds of food on the plate. Underneath the pile of roast beef, there's all these different kinds of vegetables. It's really colorful. And of course, Anna already tried that, uh, well, this guy here, this big old pudding. So yeah, we're off to a great start here. Well, it's the next day and we're in the town part of Air now. And we're over on this really cute street with lots of different boutiques and cafes. Now the reason it is the next day is because yesterday we ate that food and we were just way too full. We couldn't eat anymore. But don't worry, we're out today to eat more, a lot more Scottish food, that's for sure. But before we do, we have to try this. What is this? Iron brew. Iron brew. So, so far since we've been in Scotland, everyone has told us we have to try this. And we're like, what the heck is this? Is like, is it an alcoholic drink or something? No. It is soda. It is Scottish soda and apparently it's all the rage here. I know nothing about it and well, we're about to try it. So I had never heard of Iron Brew before our trip here to Scotland. We were here eight years ago and I don't remember it that time around. Maybe it's because of you guys on Instagram telling us we have to try it. But it is Scotland's most popular soft drink and I read that it's also considered their other national drink. It's supposed to have like a a lemon, no, a citrus orange flavor to it. Oh, it would, it's an orange can. It's an orange can. <laughs> it actually dates back to the early 1900s, funny enough. So really? It's an old, That's 120 old. years old. Well, hopefully, hopefully not this can. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it out. Hmm. It totally reminds me of something, but I can't tell you what it is. Maybe a cream soda? I haven't had a cream soda in like a zillion years, and I think there is is there orange cream soda? Am I wrong? I think there is that? an orange cream soda. So maybe it's that, but there's like it totally reminds me of a childhood drink, and I just can't <laughs> pinpoint it. So it is fizzy, obviously. It's a soft drink, and it's got a certain orangey flavor to it. It's good. I mean, I I don't know if I'd like seek it out in other countries. I think you can get it around the world, but I like it. I'll try this really quick as well. Hmm. I'm not really sure what I think either. Uh, definitely get a hint of cream soda. I don't think I'd drink it every day. But I mean, if you're from Scotland, you're born here, and this has been around the whole time, I mean, you would get used to this. Here's the funny thing, though. A Scottish person told me that uh, this is the only place in the world where their soda kind of overtook, like, the big guys, like a Coca-Cola. I think this is more popular here. That's wrong. In Peru, it's another place. They have Inca Cola there, and we learned it when we went to Peru. So it's interesting that Scotland and Peru have kind of these alternative sodas that are more popular than Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Very interesting, Scotland. So maybe we've given ourselves kind of an easy start when it comes to Scottish food, doing a Sunday roast and then a soda. Pretty easy stuff to eat. However, we've heard a lot of people say that Scottish food is not good. We're gonna really put ourselves to the test on the next few dishes, so let's head on in there. We've just come over to the Tam O'Shanter Inn. It's the oldest pub here in Air, and there's an actual reason that we came here. When we've been looking at like a lot of pub menus, wanted to hit up a few different types of Scottish foods, and this one has kind of a little tasting menu. It's, they have it as Scottish tapas on their, on their menu, and you can choose from a few things, which really appeal to us, because obviously when you're doing a video like this, you have to eat a whole bunch of different things, and sometimes you have all these huge portions, so this is the perfect way to do this. I wish more restaurants would do something like this. So we have three different things here. Some I'm slightly nervous to try. So on this end we have a steak pie. So I guess it's a Scottish steak pie. Here we have mince and tatties. And this, this is the one I'm really nervous about. This is haggis. You've probably heard of it before. And it's on meeps and tatties. All right, here we go. I'm gonna try out this steak pie. It's super quiet in this restaurant. It's a little bit awkward, but I like the little dish it comes in. It's nice and small. It's smothered in like a gravy kind of sauce, and it smells really good. It's actually a big hunk of beef too. It's pretty thick. All right, this is right up my alley. It actually reminds me of something my parents used to cook when I was a kid growing up. It's like a thicker style roast. It would be, you'd be in the oven all afternoon. You would smell this. It's really good. Let's talk about the gravy as well. Nice and salty, nice and rich. And I'm learning very quickly just how much Scottish people like beef and how well they do it. Let's try dish number two. This one is mince and tatties. So I'm pretty sure it's just like brown beef, maybe in a sauce with some <laughs> vegetables. I can't see the bottom, so we'll find can, can you say the name again? Because it's mince kind of fun. And mince and tatties. I'm pretty sure tatties must be potatoes, right? <laughs> it must be potatoes. Let's see what it's, it's all about. Do you think all the meat's on the bottom? It oh, is. Oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. Oh, how cool. So it is potatoey and saucy and beef. So let's give it a go. 
smells really good. It reminds me a little bit of in the last video, we had a scotch pie. Kind of reminds me of the inside of that. Simple but flavorful, hearty, good on a cold day for sure. I feel like that's kind of the theme of Scottish food. It's like yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. not, well, I don't think it gets very hot here, so the food is generally pretty hearty. This next one makes me nervous. This is haggis, and if you don't know what haggis is, get this, it's made up of liver, heart, stomach, and lungs. And it's sitting on meat of a sheep, of a sheep, Anna just told me. And it's sitting on um, neeps and tatties, which is like potatoes and root vegetables, I believe. But I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty nervous to try this. I'm just gonna go all in on this. I'm, I got a bit of everything, a bit of the neeps and tatties. Uh, I've never tried something like this in my life, so all you Scottish people watching, don't make fun of me. Let's see what my reaction will be. Oh yeah, I'm not quite sure what I think of this. So right away I taste that kind of irony, like if you ever had any kind of intestines before, like liver, it does come through. The texture is like meat, but it's not. Like it's, there's little pieces of things, I don't know which parts of the body that's from. Um, it's an acquired taste. It's definitely not my favorite uh, dish of the day. I'll take another bite. I'm like, I'm like a little hesitant. There's lots of lots of spice in there though. The spice is good. The potatoes are good. I think it's just hard to get my mind past what's inside of this thing. You know, you got the lungs, you got a heart, you got a stomach. I don't, who knows what else is in here, but mm, it's okay. This is not my favorite. So in general, when we travel, I would say we're relatively adventurous in the middle somewhere, but we usually try, at least attempt to try things. I can tell you, if we were not vloggers, I would not be trying Haggis. There's something about like innards that I just does not interest me, and I'll usually like at least attempt to try things. This is. This is a long shot for me. I can't believe I'm actually going to do this. So you're doing it for the, the I'm YouTube. doing it for the YouTube. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right, down the hat. So that one is for all you guys that say that you only ever eat things that you really like. Not a fan. <laughs> Not a fan at all. There are actually some nice flavors in there, like some maybe clove or cinnamon. It's got that kind of like Sometimes I refer to it as like Christmassy flavors that you think of in a, mm. in a drink or something. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, that kind of, as Trevor was saying, that kind of like livery flavor definitely comes through and I can't even deal with it. I think maybe if I could take my head out of it a little bit, I'd maybe enjoy it, but never again. I yeah, think. this is, I think that's it's one, one and done. One of those times <laughs> we decided to try, like, it's a big local tradition and haggis is not something we normally go for. No, right? but it is Scotland's national <laughs> dish, so we had to do it. Okay, so sorry Scotland, right? Sorry. <laughs> Everything else was really good. <laughs> All right, that was really good. Besides the haggis, that wasn't our favorite thing. I but think. I'm proud of us for trying it. And even someone came over to like clear the table and she was like, good job on trying it. I'm glad you did it. She did. Yeah, she was proud of us. <laughs> <laughs> we told her we're from Canada and you know, she's from Scotland. She said, good, good job. It's not for everybody. But yeah. anyway, we wanted to bring up, I don't know if it came across on the camera. Ho hopefully it didn't, but you guys might wonder sometimes when we're filming these videos, is it ever awkward, yeah. like in a setting? And we've literally filmed at hundreds of places, done loads and loads of videos, and usually you figure it out. Like uh -huh. you just get used to people being around and kind of watching you. But it was definitely one of the most awkward filming places ever. <laughs> you could almost hear a pin drop at times. So uh, the camera that we film on looks like this. So anytime we picked up the camera to do a scene, everybody would stop. And I don't know if air- It was qui it quiet in general. It was, and I don't know if people in air just, me well, they're probably not used to YouTubers <laughs> like us, people uh, talking about food, but it was really awkward, but it was still tons of fun, wasn't it? It was a lot of fun. Hopefully it didn't come across <laughs> too much. If you thought we were acting weird, that's probably why. Mm -hmm. But literally like it was just so, everyone was just, it was a pub. Usually the problem <laughs> you quiet. have in a pub is that it's so loud that you have a hard time filming because you're, you have to get your voice across. This was totally different. I think it was everybody's first drink, clearly. <laughs> Speaking of drinks, we're off to get some whiskey. We have just come over to a, another pub. This one has a whole lot of whiskeys to try. Of course, we are in Scotland. We have to try some Scottish whiskey or scotch. So I just looked it up. Like, is all scotch made, or I should say, is all whiskey made in Scotland scotch? And the answer is yes, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Basically, I think if whiskey whiskey is made here in Scotland, it's scotch. It cannot be called scotch if it's made anywhere else. Basically like champagne. It looks like you got one in your hand. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> we have two to 
try today. They are both single malts. So I will fully admit that whiskey is never my spirit of choice. I usually go for like gin or vodka. So probably not gonna be for me today and especially uh, single malts. I've tried a few of them in my life. Never been a huge fan. It's one of those things that I would love to love. I feel like it's like very impressive to go into a place and order a single malt scotch, but maybe someday. You have neat. Neat, yes. We started to decide, we did get a cup of ice just in case, but starting off neat just to get the full flavor. This one I think is a Lockley, I believe it was called, and which I also think is from a nearby distillery. I was looking up some places that we could potentially go um, nearby, but it's a little too far, but it is one of the closer whiskey distilleries here in the area. Should I just try it? Yeah, just go right for it. it smells lovely. Like I do love the smell of whiskey. I will tell you that. <laughs> Does it burn? That's oh, the it burns. <laughs> Definitely burn. I mean, I don't dislike the taste of it. It's hard to describe. It's just like you obviously get that al like strong alcohol flavor. It burns a little bit. It's a little bit smoky. It's definitely not the smokiest single malt I've ever had. I've definitely had way, way stronger. So this is probably more up my alley if we were going on to single malts, if I had to pick a single malt. This is one of the better ones in terms of what I prefer. It's not bad. So the scotch that I went for is from the Isle of Arran, which is very close to the coast where we're at here in uh, in air. So you can kind of see it off in the distance. There's so many different Scottish Isles. It's super cool. And they have their own whiskey or their own scotch. Now, for the record, I'm also not like a huge scotch guy. I've had it before. I like it. It's just I'm more of a bourbon fellow. I like that bourbon's made with corn. It's also in the whiskey family. I know Scottish people watching are probably cringing, but hey, I do like my whiskeys. Can't wait to try this. I also have it neat. I might try it with some ice as well just to see what the difference is. Oh man, I do like the smell though. Okay, let's do it. Oh yeah, peppery. It does have that peaty, that kind of like campfire taste. I don't have another word for that, but it's like a little bit smoky. But I do just love the whiskey. It goes down smooth. There it is. Just like the after. Oh yeah, it just cleans out your <laughs> nasal everything. It just makes it so good. Mmm. Every time I have stuff like this, I do say to myself, why don't I drink more of this instead of like a beer sometimes? Um, there's something about, you know, you walk into a bar and you feel very sophisticated having your scotch. I know in our part of Canada, not many people order scotch. When we do, it's always the top shelf and it's the most expensive by far. Let me just try it with some ice though. All right, the ice is uh, in here. Now, I usually do like my bourbon whiskey with ice. So let's see if I like my scotch whiskey in Scotland with some ice. Usually I find the ice kind of opens it up and waters the flavors down a little bit, but it makes it cold. Let's try it. All right, well it's official. I'm definitely an on the rocks type of guy when it comes to whiskey. I like it neat, just sometimes it's so room temperature and you just kind of, it's really alcohol forward. The ice kind of rounds it out a bit. Believe it or not, it's a slightly warm day in Scotland. The weather's good, so it's kind of refreshing. Uh, to have this, but I don't know if I'll ever switch from bourbon, guys. I'll just be completely honest. I like my whiskeys, but bourbon's my uh, drink of choice when it comes to it. But I tell you what, it's a lot of fun to be here in, in here in air, uh, trying some scotch. It's so much fun. Well, it's been an awesome couple of days trying all the delicious. Scottish food. We didn't find everything we were after, but we found quite a bit. We did, and I think we did pretty well, and I'm happy we tried the haggis, even though it wasn't <laughs> our favorite thing. We had, but mainly everything we tried over the last couple yeah. of days has been really good. Yeah, the haggis, I think we'd have to try it a lot more, maybe be in Scotland for a good part of a year. Yeah, I that don't would know have, if I'm going to do it again. <laughs> probably not. But hey, give us an E for effort. It was it was a lot of fun, really, uh, going around air and trying all the delicious food. Yeah, and you guys, especially if you're from Scotland, might be wondering, why do you go to air? We did actually explain it a few, quite a few videos ago, what our plan was here in Scotland. One is that we wanted to go to the Highlands, which is way too expensive in August, so yeah. not a possibility. <laughs> we would love to come back to Scotland, though, and spend a significant amount of time. So questions for you guys. When's the best time to come when things, the weather's not too bad, but 
cheaper prices. <laughs> yeah, uh, like right now it's um, towards the end of August mm -hmm. and the prices in Inverness when we were looking it up were close to $500 a night. Mm -hmm. We're YouTubers, we can't uh, afford to spend $500 a night. We travel full time for you guys that don't know. And, and YouTube we, does not pay that well. YouTube okay. doesn't pay that well <laughs> and we need a lot more Patreons and channel <laughs> members if you guys want us to do that. I wish we could take you up there mm -hmm. maybe in a future visit though, huh? Yeah, so again, <laughs> suggestions, time of year, but also like are there hidden gems? Do you have any favorite spots here in Scotland that we should visit next time? Now, this is it for Scotland, but it's not it for the UK. We are making our way down to England mm -hmm. and we are going, should we just say it? Yeah. The Lake District. The Lake District are, is up next. Yeah. We can't wait. This Lake District in England, in Northern England, has come so highly recommended. It looks really pretty. And it looks pretty, and everyone tells us it's incredible. Mm -hmm. And we're going there in the next video, so expect uh, expect a great vlog from there. Hopefully, everything goes our way. Good food, good weather. Pray to the weather gods. Yeah, the weather has been not too bad here in air. I feel like we kind of left it. <laughs> yeah, and after that, there will be more England adventures coming up. But if you guys got this far in the video, it's Trevor and Anna, delightful travelers. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe, leave a comment, hit like. You know the drill. Heck, share the video if you got this far in the video. Probably means you like it. But um, I don't know about you, but all this food and all this whiskey means I need a nap. Yeah, I think me too. <laughs> head off and go take it up. <laughs> Alright guys, that's it. From Air, wishing you delightful travels. See you soon.